Okay guys, today we are going to be taking a look at a few knives that you probably can't destroy. So without any further ado, before we get into it, as, please, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram. The support is always appreciated. Okay, so we usually actually work smallest to largest knives with most of these lists. Today I thought I would invert it and work from largest to smallest in knives that I don't really think that you can destroy. Okay, like I said, let's talk about it. This list is not comprehensive and it doesn't cover every knife that you can't destroy and I have of course more knives in my collection that I think are also pretty difficult to destroy but I thought that of all the knives if I had to baton a rock or do something crazy or wild these are probably the ones that would hold up the best. So the first one is going to be the DPX Heft 12 or Chop 12 and of course this blade needs no introduction realistically but it is a extremely stout parang styled almost machete I guess you'd still call it a knife especially being that it is about zero, about 0 0.17 in thickness but that super hefty spine and that kind of reinforced tip give it not only a lot of uh, weight and heft when it comes to chopping larger brush but also a lot of rigidity this is one of the thicker knives on the list of course not the thickest but one of the thicker ones and for being its size like for being as large as it is it is very stout and very heavy duty so I think that this would be one that you would have one heck of a hard time destroying it's also in Nylox which is the uh, European or Italian version of D2 so it's a little bit better than just standard D2 but it's essentially equivalent in a lot of properties and if you know D2 for anything you know that it is very much a tough steel that is hard to break hard to chip and hard to overall destroy so that is number one on the list of course has to be and of course being made by lion steel it you know and of course being made by lion steel you know it's going to be a very tough machete chopper whatever you want to call it okay not as thick but almost as big is the next one on the list and that is the ontario the ontario knife company or okc rtac 2 and this guy, like I said, is pretty big in its own right. It's very much a very similar blade to the SE Hunglis, the original Hunglis. And uh, this one being made out of 5160 spring steel, it is also going to be extremely tough. Now, of course, it is not as thick as the DPX Heft, but being that it is made out of a spring steel, it is extremely hard to break. And I'm sure as you guys can see by the wear marks on this, I've already well and done put this thing through its paces but overall it is a surprisingly lighter weight option for a very still a pretty big pretty pretty big pretty seriously sized blade that once again you were going that once again you're going to be able to do a lot of batoning and heavy hard work with and once again I think that you'd be very hard to destroy this very hard pressed to destroy this blade even with its thinner tip as you guys can see there um, it's still, like I said, is very strong and very hard to break. And that's, like I said, a lot to do with the 5160 spring steel that this blade uses. And I almost decided to throw the buck thug on this list because the buck thug is very similar in the fact that it's also 5160 and also a full flat grind. But while it is very indestructible, it is also very rare and very hard to get. So I decided probably not to throw that one on this list just because you might as well not throw knives that are completely discontinued and have been discontinued for years. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the SE Hunglis 2. Essentially, the Hunglis and the Artac 2 kind of fill up that larger kind of chopper knife build. And while the Hunglis 2 itself is not made out of 5160, as I would love it to be, it is still made out of differentially heat treated 1095, so it is still quite tough. Some people may argue edge retention is better on 1095, anyways, but either way, this is another one that even though it is full flat grind, or near full flat grind the hunglises are not actually technically full flat grind but close to it and uh, even though it is and it comes to a very very thin tip hopefully you guys can 
see there how thin the tip really thins out to be. Uh, it is still an incredibly tough knife and you would be hard pressed to break it bashing it through some serious material. Uh, it is a very tough blade and it, that is why it's earned its spot on many a list before of survival and scouting knives and that is why this is one of my go-to scouting knives itself. It is very durable, very tough, and ultimately a great multi-use blade. So that is the Hoongless 2 by SE. Okay, stepping it down in size, of course we have my venerable and much beloved CRK Pacific. I kind of had to throw this on my list because I feel like this is my go-to survival knife. If I didn't feel like this knife was indestructible or if I thought I could break it, it probably shouldn't be my survival knife. But I do really feel like it is indestructible and very hard to break. I'm sure if I you know, blew it up with explosives or shot at it with a gun, maybe I would break it. But with realistic wilderness tasks, this one is going to be quite hard to break. And uh, overall, it is very confidence inspiring. So that is the CRK Pacific. This one, of course, is in the CPM S35VN. Maybe, maybe one of these days, I will get the 4V, which I feel would be even harder to break because 4V's uh, toughness is extremely hard and similar to another knife we'll talk about in a little bit. But the CPM S35VN is also still pretty good. And once again, I still feel like this is a very, very tough blade. So that is the CRK Pacific and of course this one's set up with all my survival stuff because it is my go-to survival knife. Okay, next one up on the list is the venerable Falkneven A1. And I feel like due to its thickness and due to the overall just build quality on this blade and actually many of Falkneven's knives in general, I feel like these would be very hard to break. Now the tip itself is a little bit concerning and that's actually why I did not throw the Falkneven F1 on this list because I have had experiences with convex ground uh, blades that don't have a lot of support towards the tip end up being very weak. This one is a little bit different because as you can see this has a swedge towards the has a swedge towards the tip so that gives you added rigidity and strength at the very tip while still allowing you to have a good penetrating and piercing tip. So it's kind of a little bit of the best of the boast best it's a little bit of the best of the boat. It's a little bit of the best of both worlds, but still not necessarily the toughest. So the tip is a little bit uh, not, so the tip is not my favorite, but as far as it goes and as far as how thick this blade is, this is the thickest on the list. And to give you some uh, kind of background or to give you some comparison here, this is the DPX heft. Like I said, this is 0 0.17, so close to 3 sixteenths of an inch. And you can see there that the Falcon even A1, while not much thicker, is still a bit thicker still than, than the DPX heft. So that means this one is pushing close to a quarter inch thick, which is a little bit thicker than I like, but at the same time too, it also does make it conversely very hard to destroy, very hard to break. I will say one thing to Falcon even's credit on both the F1, even the S1, the A1, is that even though they do have very thick spines, the way that they are ground in that convex manner does take a lot of the thickness out of the very cutting edge. So one thing that does usually impress me uh, about Falkenevens or had impressed me in the past is that even though they are very thick in the spine, they usually have very good, very keen cutting edges. So just to bear that in mind as a, a reference point for the Falkenevens. Of course, this wouldn't be a right and proper list without throwing the SE6 on here. The SE6 is actually not one of the thicker blades on this list, but why I do like the SE6 is similar to the Hoongless 2 and the SE4 we'll get into in just a second. Uh, the differentially heat treated uh, 1095 does make these blades very hard to break. I have tried to break these knives specifically, explicitly trying to abuse them to get the tips to snap. They just don't because they bend a lot before they break. So the SC6 is another one that is extremely tough and extremely hard to break. And the reason why I love throwing the SCs, the full flat ground SCs on these lists is because they look maybe at first appearance like they're weak, like they would fail. But they're actually very tough to break. Now we've talked about SEs a lot, so I'll kind of glaze over that one. 
Next one on the list is going to be the Topps TB or Tom Brown Tracker. And I have to throw this on the list because it is a quarter inch thick, so it is a thick, thick slab of 1095, once again, differentially heat treated uh, Topps does a great job with their 1095 have for a very long time and uh, while the tracker once again this list isn't necessarily the best slicers the best cutters these are knives that are hard to destroy and I feel like when we're talking about knives that are hard to destroy the tracker is definitely there I mean if you just look at this tip you know this monstrous tip that it does come down to a tip but it is just so thick and uh, you really feel it with a lot of these knives like the SE6 or uh, with the SE6 maybe the Pacific and a few others you know you pick them up and they feel reasonably lightweight for what they are but you pick up the Topps Tom Brown tracker and it just feels like you're holding a slab of steel which you are definitely holding a slab of steel but it feels definitely like that so inspire some confidence and definitely you got to know that you're not going to be breaking the blade. Okay, next one up on the list, and another one that is reasonably thin. This is actually one of the thinner ones on the list, and this is the Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore. And this one is an eighth of an inch thick, so it is not particularly hefty or you know heavy duty, but this knife is made of O1 tool steel. And similar to how I talked about, you know, 5160 being a spring steel, very springy, very hard to break, the uh, steel O1 or O1 tool steel is very, very similar. It is uh, super springy and overall it is a very tough steel being that it is tool steel it wears like iron literally it's, it is kind of iron in a way but it does uh, wear very hard and this one is another one that I wanted to throw on the list because uh, all these knives I have hard used but this one included and uh, I've really once again tried to get this knife to break by I would cut like uh, kind of j vague notches in wood and like vague square notches and I would pop them out by batoning this blade into the wood that was just kind of like cut by a saw and then prying up with it trying to get it to break and I just could not this O1 tool steel flexes a lot more than you might think and uh, really for being an eighth of an inch thick uh, it it is definitely very tough and that's nice to know because especially in something like this battle lore where you know it has about a four and a half inch blade you know you might reasonably actually hard use this thing with a lot of smaller knives with thinner stocks of steel it's not as big of a deal because you're just not going to be able to process large pieces of wood but rest assured the O1 tool steel coming out of battle horse uh, knives or BHK they do a really good job and like I said the battle horse knives uh, Battle lore I have definitely used tried to use abused and tried to break and it does not break So it is a really solid blade and don't let the thickness fool you It is certainly capable Okay, next up on the list in one that once again I will kind of glaze over is the SE4 now the SE4 kind of unlike or ironically unlike the other two SEs I've talked about uh, is actually kind of rather thick for its size now once again This is a four inch cutting edge just over four inch blade length and uh, it is about I think 0 0.17 so pushing around that 3 16 of an inch thick and it, like I said I mean if you look at the uh, G10 slabs of handle you can see that this is a rather thick blade for its handle and for its size so it actually is reasonably robust you know once again factoring in the differentially heat treated 1095 you're not going to have any issues with this blade taking it running it through the ringer it will handle everything you throw at it and I can tell you that with great confidence because I have not stress tested the SE4 yet still working on the SE6 the Humbless but I know that I have owned the SE3 the smaller brother to this one for many years and uh, I do have a video explicitly trying to snap the tip off of that blade and I got to the point where I bent it I think about at a I think I've been about 45 degrees off of its like normal where the tip is supposed to be and it just still just bent over and then of course I proceeded to just take it and bend it right back and uh, it definitely worked and was not the prettiest thing the tip is still slightly bent from that but uh, you know the fact of the matter is you can absolutely run those essence through the ringer and they will not fail <laughs> 
Okay, last one on the list is the BRK Bushcrafter. And I wanted to throw this one on here because it's nice to have some smaller knives. Uh, you know, I felt like this list had a lot of big, burly, thick blades that are obviously going to take a lot of abuse. But you know, your smaller blades like the BRK Bushcrafter that has an under four inch blade length being made out of CPM 3B. Um, it is absolutely a tank in and of itself, and there is definitely reasons why this is my go-to bushcrafting knife, one of them being that CPM3V is an extremely tough steel. Now, yes, it's true, CPM3V is not the easiest to resharpen, it's not the, you know, most stain resistant, but for what this steel is, it is extremely high in toughness and edge retention, and so when you pair those two together, you get just a hard-wearing knife that once again you can pound on all day and do tasks that you realistically probably shouldn't do with this knife and it will do them no problem and once again I think the reasonable so the, th the stock on this is 530 seconds so that's about a 0 0.15 of an inch thick so it's reasonably thick it's not you know as thin as the battle war it is a little bit thicker but uh, is still not like super thick, super tough, you know, certainly nowhere near quarter inch thick, but uh, it is a good thickness. And of course the convex or scandivex uh, grind really only helps with that rigidity because you still hold on to a lot of that thickness of the stock spine up until about halfway through the scandy grind. So you are retaining a lot of the strength of this blade in that spine. Uh, very close down to the edge, but similar, like I mentioned, to the Falknevens, uh, you know, it does, because it is a convex, it does lose a lot of that thickness closer towards the cutting edge. So you still get a nice, precise cutting edge with a lot of that added strength. Okay guys, that's a handful of knives from my collection that are impossible to destroy or at least very hard. Hopefully you guys found the video useful and as always, God bless, I'm out.